Hello, friends. Hello, River of Life. Thank you for tuning in as we continue with our current series called Spirit Wars. And uh, I just uh, finished a few days ago my Sunday morning message called The Wilderness. It is a very, very important aspect of the whole series that deals with the spiritual realm, with spiritual matters. And the wilderness is probably not a favorite topic for any of us, as it has to do with somewhat of a dry season or a difficult time in our lives. And I'm sure that every one of us can attest to the fact that we have, every one of us been or currently is going through a wilderness. Or if you're not, just wait a sec. I promise you that you will have this type of experience in your life. And so again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for those of you who joined us Sunday morning, either uh, in church or online. We are so glad that you are part of our journey through this series. And now we're going to continue our journey through the wilderness together. And I would like to stop at two main points and really expound a little more on that. So without any further ado, again, my name is uh, Mario. I'm on the teaching team here at our church, River of Life in Onalaska, Wisconsin. For those of you who uh, watch uh, out of state and many different places, I know that there's quite a view and we feel so honored that you want to be part of what God is doing in our church. So, all right, let's just dive right in. As I just mentioned, we're going through this discussion about what is the wilderness and why that is an important topic for our series. And it's one of the things that I mentioned and spent some time talking about during my message last, uh, last Sunday was the what I call the twofold will of God. Why is that important? Why is it important to talk about the will of God? Well, as many things in life, pretty much anything, we need to ask ourselves if we have the right perspective. People would say things like, attitude is everything, I'm not sure it's everything, it's very important, or perspective is everything. And I don't think I would ascribe to the school that says perspective is everything, but perspective is very important, especially in our lives as Christians. And so for us to have the right perspective of what the wilderness is, we need to understand what the will of God for our lives is. And again, going back to Sunday, as you remember, if you have watched the sermon, if you have been with us, it is a twofold will of God. The first one is what uh, is commonly known as God's ordained will. That is the will of God that ordains and actively creates things in our lives. It opens doors. It speaks things into existence. God leads us actively into something or out of something. The second part, the second aspect so to speak, or you can just imagine the will of God as a, as this fork in the, in the road. It's a twofold will of God. The second side of the will of God, the second side of the coin, uh, if you will, it is God's permissible will. And so God's permissible will is things that God allows to happen in our lives. And if you remember from the message, if you uh, tuned in with us, this last Sunday, I gave some examples such as the fall. And we know that God did not make Adam and Eve to fall into sin. He simply allowed them to sin because they have free will. And so that is an example of God's permissible will. Or for example, if you, um, if you are sick, if you have a condition which is a direct result of the fall, uh, we would not believe, hopefully not, that God made us sick. Uh, this is simply a result of the fall. And maybe even our own decisions, our own lifestyles. And that is a perfect example of God's permissible will because he would allow that to happen to our lives. Why is that important? Well, speaking of perspective, correct? Jesus 
the Bible says, knew that he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. That is very clear. Scripture actually says that Jesus, being led by the Holy Spirit, went into the wilderness to be tempted by the enemy. Now, we know that because Jesus told us so. Why do I say that? Well, Jesus was by himself in the wilderness, just him and the enemy and, and the devil. And there was this battle and he was there for 40 days. And we know the story. He was tempted with different things. But how do we know what happened? Well, I believe, and I'm not the only one, most uh, theologians would agree that Jesus was the one that told his disciples what happened. There is no other way for them knowing what happened with Jesus being alone in the wilderness. And in that same passage, it says that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So obviously, Jesus was fully aware of the fact that it was God's ordained will for him to go to the wilderness period of his life before entering into his ministry. And he must have told his disciples that he was fully aware of the fact that God ordained such a period, such a season in his life to go into the wilderness by himself. Now that is really, really important because it shows us that Jesus had the right perspective of where he was going and why he was there. You see, what I would say is Jesus actually had a heavenly perspective of where he was going. He knew that God had ordained this time in his life. He knew that it wasn't just something he wanted to do and God just allowed it to happen. It was God's ordained will for him to be there. And I can just imagine Jesus fully being aware of the fact that God is leading him there by the Holy Spirit. That he just had a different perspective, a heavenly perspective fully being aware of the fact that this is where God wants him to be at this very moment. Now, my question for you and for me and for, for everyone else is, do you, do I, do we know why we are where we are in this moment? Do you have a heavenly perspective about where you are? Maybe you are finding yourself right now in a personal wilderness, maybe it is a family wilderness, maybe it is a vocational wilderness, vocational desert, so to speak. Do you have a revelation about that? Can you honestly say, I know, I believe that God, who is in full control of everything in the whole world, including my life, including every aspect of my life, do I believe that God in his ultimate wisdom and sovereignty has led me to this point. That he's still in control, that he wasn't caught by surprise by this. On top of that, that this is God's ordained will for me to be. It's a difficult question, isn't it? Because it makes us feel uncomfortable. It makes us wrestle, wrestle, bump heads with God's sovereignty, God being an all-powerful and all-knowing full of wisdom and love and grace. And yes, at the same time, God who is love is willing me, he's ordaining this season of my life to be in a desert place. Yes. It is really important. It's all about perspective, right? Is that what we said? Maybe not 100% of the time all about, but a very big part of our journey, of our spiritual growth, it is to have the right perspective. On top of that, as I mentioned earlier, to have a heavenly perspective in this series of spirit wars that we can rise above our circumstances, that we rise above our fear, that we rise above our insecurities, that we rise above the lies of the enemy and to be able to see everything from a bird's eye view, from a heavenly perspective and understand that God has ordained such a season as this in my life, right here and right now. 
If we come to this point, it would change everything, wouldn't it? Then it, me, instead of complaining and whining and feeling like a victim, I would most likely embrace the grind. I would most likely rub up my sleeve and say, all right, God, what you've got for me? What is it that you want to accomplish in my life? Allowing me, not just allowing me, but transitioning me and sending me into this season of being in the wilderness. You see, in the wilderness, speaking of a perspective of a different view, of a different angle, my, my prayer is that you see the wilderness of your life in a different life, in a different light, because wilderness is your next assignment. That's what happened in the life of Jesus. It was his next assignment. He was led by the Spirit to his next assignment before he enters his greatest and most important assignment, his ministry. My prayer for you is that your wilderness is your graduation into what God has next for you. Because if we look at the life of Jesus, that's really what it was. Before he was launched into his ministry, he had to go through this time of being by himself in the wilderness, being tempted, being separated from all his distractions. And that was his graduation. And guess what? When he passed the test with flying colors, he was launched into his ministry. So your wilderness is your assignment. Your wilderness is your graduation into what God has next for you. But for my second point, I want you to dive in a little bit deeper into the three biblical heroes I talked to you a few days ago on Sunday morning. Moses, John the Baptist, and Jesus himself. As I talked um, about the life of, G of, of Moses and, and mentioned about what his experience was like during the wilderness, what happened was the wilderness removed all of the distractions. Moses clearly saw God in the burning bush. It wasn't just a natural phenomena. It wasn't just something that was just strange. And he was curious, even though he was. But once all of the distractions were removed, he was faced with the burning bush and he quickly realized that right there within this fire is God Almighty himself speaking to him. It was God revealing himself to Moses. What I realized quickly is that without the desert, there would not have been a Moses. Isn't that interesting? From everything that shaped Moses and all the failures that led Moses to run into the wilderness, when that time passes, when he receives his assignment in the wilderness, going back to face Pharaoh, Moses was never the same. The Moses we know, the Moses that we read in the Bible that became this courageous hero, who had a speech impediment and he needed his brother to help him with everything that happened in the life of Moses. We can clearly state the fact that without the wilderness, there would not have been Moses, not the one that we know of. And the same is true for you. In the same way, you and I are in the wilderness or will be in the wilderness. God is calling us to be who we are. And we are becoming the people God has called us to be because of our wilderness. Let's look at John the Baptist. The wilderness was the pulpit he preached from. You see, when people entered and they heard the, the news of John the Baptist spread out and, and people were flocking to hear his message about repentance and people by the multitudes, by the thousands would go whole families to hear him preach and to repent and to partake of the baptism of John the Baptist. All of a sudden, we see this picture unfolding that is not so much that even John was in the wilderness, even though he was, but God 
used John the Baptist who transformed the wilderness and made it his pulpit. And in the lives of us, probably the loudest and the most successful way we can preach is speaking out of the wilderness of our lives. It's about perspective today, isn't it? And I want you to catch that. I want you to realize that right now, if you are in the wilderness, this is a pulpit. And the world around you is watching how you as a disciple of Jesus are going to conduct yourself. How are you going to react? How are you going to embrace? How are you going to, instead of doubting, believing God for what he has in store for you? Without the wilderness, there would have been no John the Baptist. And I repeat it again, the same way you are and you will be in the desert. God is calling you to be what you are supposed to be because of the wilderness. It's about perspective. And that is one. You will never be the same because of the wilderness. And then we're moving on to Jesus, our greatest example, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was ordained by God. It was God's ordained will just as it was for Moses and just as it was God's ordained will for John the Baptist to be in the wilderness. It was God's ordained will for Jesus to be in his wilderness before he entered his earthly ministry. The wilderness, in fact, launched, as I mentioned earlier, his ministry. Jesus knew that before his assignment, before his ministry, before the very reason why Jesus came on earth, there needed to be a wilderness. And he passed the test. Without the wilderness, we would not have had an example of how to resist the enemy and how to overcome temptations. The wilderness taught Jesus how to be spirit-led and how to succeed in the spiritual battles. I'll give you one more. The wilderness taught Jesus the right priorities. Because in the wilderness, he showed the enemy that God is first. And his will for Jesus' life comes first before anything else. So you see, the wilderness is our graduation. The wilderness is our launch pad. The wilderness will teach us the right priorities. I've heard once a preacher say this, and I mentioned uh, during my message that I had been to more than one wilderness in my life. And while I was in that type of a period in my life, I heard this preacher say this. You see, all of us may feel like this wilderness time of our lives is a demotion, that this is a time of punishment. God, why am I here? Why do I feel alone? Why do I feel everything is so hard? It's hard to come by. Lord, I don't really have a job. Whatever your wilderness is, he said this, it might feel like a setback. But remember this, friends, this is not your setback. This is your reset. Your setback is actually your setup. God is setting you up for something great. And that which you see as a demotion, that which you see as a setback, is actually your setup. That was true for the life of Moses. That was true for John the Baptist. That was certainly true for the Lord Jesus. And we who are his disciples, Jesus said that we're going to follow his path. He was persecuted and will be persecuted as well. His wilderness was not his setback. And it's not your setback either. Jesus' wilderness was his setup. And your wilderness is most certainly your setup as well. If you agree with me, let's pray together. Father, I just uh, pray that every one of us sees our wilderness from a new heavenly perspective right this moment. Lord, I pray that we embrace our wilderness 
because God, you will strengthen us, you will refine us, and you will graduate us in what for what you have next for us. And last but not least, Lord, I pray that everyone who watches right now is placed in a position, in a new position, right there into the wilderness. Lord, I pray that they set themselves, that they position themselves in such a way that they could be transformed, that they will get closer to you, that they will be spirit-led, and that they will overcome. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you all. God bless.